Brian Davis, um, late director of curriculum at New College and, um, and the uh, um, project director for this, uh, this particular project. And uh, Stephanie Warren here is uh, still with New College and she's the project manager, so kind of a double act at the moment. Um, this project was probably, I think, the most exciting project uh, to be involved in um, in my time at New College because it actually got us out doing what the government has been asking us to do, which was engaging with all sections of the community, all sections of industry, and also uh, our partners. So we, we came up with some very, very interesting results, which I hope uh, over the course of the next few minutes um, we'll be able to, uh, to share with you in a way that's meaningful. So the, uh, the, the project was using uh, uh, customer relationship management and co other collaborative tools with business and community and enterprise. Um, and we targeted mainly the Swindon area where, we, where the college is based. However, one of our, uh, our partners, Ultra, um, was a, uh, a company based at, actually not far away from here in Burnley. So, uh, moving on. The project focus was really the development of systems and business processes uh, to empower the college or the further education institute or higher education institutes and the external partner interface. That was a key area that we were looking at. How do we capture and talk to our partners in a meaningful manner? Because uh, I don't know uh, if you're familiar with FE, we tend to talk in, well, I just did it then, we tend to talk in abbreviations and acronyms and TLAs and lots of SLAs and SLNs and all sorts of things. And, you know, even the basic uh, language of employer engagement meant nothing, absolutely nothing to business. When we said, actually, it's sales, then they got it. So we were there to facilitate collaboration uh, through communities of practice, and we were setting up communities of practice. As, as I go through this presentation, you'll see how the communities of practice emerged from, uh, from our, our work, and, uh, and also to enhance knowledge exchange from the sector into um, business and community uh, organisations, but most importantly, back uh, from them as to what it is that they want. Uh, there was quite a, a lot of institutional, I call it institutional arrogance, that we knew what they wanted, and if they didn't want what we had to offer, then we'd give it them anyway. So it was a, quite an interesting uh, conversation to have with colleagues to say, well, actually you've got to listen to what they want, and then see if we can deliver it, rather than tell them what we've got and hope they'll, they'll buy it. Um, so the specific project's aims really was to harness the possibilities of Web2 to improve effective communication for a business and community engagement. I talked, as we, I, I will hand over to Stephanie in a moment, uh, but as, I, I'll come back later on to talk to you through the Ultra case study. I have fantastic news from Ultra this morning, which is revolutionary. So uh, I, can, I can share that with you, it's hot off the press. So really, it's, what is business and community engagement, Stephanie? And the picture didn't come out on that, did it very well? Okay, as Brian says, I'm Stephanie Warren and I was the project manager at, uh, through, for the project through New College. Um, it was quite a challenging project for an FE college to take on um, in order for them to become um, involved with business in the community. Um, it's, it's, it is a government initiative, but I think they did struggle with it. Okay, the community project. Um, and there was this particular project had started to run prior to the BCU bid actually being tendered. Um, and it was somewhere where I could see that the way that the particular project manager at the time was running the project was lacking in, uh, in, in actually the, some of the skills that she needed in order to use the communication tools that obviously were part of our remit for this project base. So uh, we got together, and, uh, and I suppose in some ways it was a collaboration of two projects, which is, uh, was actually really quite revolutionary for the college anyway, um, to work together um, in order for this community project to take off. Obviously mine was to ex exercise um, some uh, experimental work to see whether or not a blog would work with this particular community. What this was, in fact, we bought the domain, let me be frank, and the capital ME is actually really quite significant, to work with the DHI, uh, the Drugs and Homeless Initiative in Swindon. Um, there's 
a great deal I learned from this personally, um, in that I had no idea that there were people that were suffering quite so badly as they in trying to obviously uh, be rehabilitated to get off um, of drugs. And, and obviously the knock-on effect is that they were um, struggling to um, have a fixed abode. So uh, I talked to them about um, what we could do in order to, for them to share their experiences um, as ex-drug users and people that had lived on the streets to contribute to a community project, as I say, which was being driven by some other members of the college. So we came up with Let Me Be Frank because of the Ask Frank um, initiatives of the government, which uh, the people that were part of this community project didn't feel gave a really true reflection of being the experiences of being on, you know, rehabilitated through drugs. Um, because of time, I can't take you through this, but please make a note of the URL at the bottom. Um, there is a lot on there that you'll see. A lot of people have fed in uh, through the blogs, um, either from other institutions that support these people uh, from different funding sources, but also the people themselves. Um, a lot of them have stayed anonymous, a lot of them haven't, but I just felt this was a really quite um, fascinating project. Fairly obviously, the tool that was used is uh, WordPress, um, and, and fairly obviously, again, was blogs. The aim for this was to create a portal to share the communities, um, and the information from both the community and from other information sources. Um, we struggled with the podcast. We, we did actually supply some cameras um, and some uh, oral recording uh, devices um, to the members of the DHI, but they struggled to actually express themselves through that forum. Uh, so we actually got the written word um, from them, which, as I say, was, uh, was actually quite, um, you will see it on the, on the website, was actually really quite a good um, out um, export. Uh, the small business, as Brian mentioned, we have some news hot off the press about the uh, small business ultra.com. Um, the aims for this particular element of the project, and this was our ultimate case study, uh, was to create a mechanism to share this product and promote this product uh, through particularly targeted markets. And to add a real value to the business, the business itself, um, I don't know whether you can see it from where you are, um, promotes um, a variety of shaving products for men. Um, and uh, the, the gentleman that owns the company unfortunately couldn't be with us today. He was due to join us, um, the managing director of Ultra. Um, but he has said that this has actually had quite a massive impact on his business, which Brian will go through now. Right, dead exciting. This <laughs> okay, so how did I find this this guy to begin with? You know, Swindon Burnley. It's quite a few, quite a long way. Look, I knew him. I knew him through LinkedIn. So, we, I was able to. We were able to canvas the business community through LinkedIn. We came up with this uh, this particular uh, individual and his company. He's an online company that sell uh, shaving products, natural shaving products. Products. No, they're halal actually, so they're very, uh, very natural. No uh, meat or animal products in them, uh, and no chemicals or, or things that would offend the Muslim community. So, we came up with a concept. So we, we were thinking about how does this, how how can we work this? How can we generate business? How's this going to add value? What is value? So I asked him, what is value? And he said, money. On the bottom line, that's value for me. Not interested in anything else. I want customers. I want to be able to get customers through the door. So we said, well, we need to look at advertising, and we need to look at, what else? Education of the customer. So we came up with this concept, probably been painted by somebody else, but edutizing the product benefits. <coughs> this was a staggering outcome. 48% of the people who viewed the edutizing part of his website went on to buy. So the conversion rate was 48% of that web page. Now, for a normal metric, 2% is good. 2% of the visitors to your site buy. 48% out 
and it's uh, validated through Google Analytics. So we're able to track, he was able to track you know, coming through the website. So what is edutizing? Well, I'm hoping this link will work and I'll show you. Please work. <laughs> okay, this is his Facebook site. So we not only put the link on his website, we also were driving very targeted marketing through um, his Facebook website as well. 27 million people potentially online at any one time. These are students at the college who made this. There's a whole lot of subliminal messages going on in here in how to use the product. And, uh, and of course the links effect comes in as well. tacky it was deliberately made that way because he wanted the managing director wanted the links effect which you wear this and you get girls it's as simple as that really 48 percent conversion rate 48 percent of the people that viewed that went on to buy now the exciting news that i heard this morning is facebook have just announced that they will allow organizations to have e-shops through Facebook, and Ultra is one of the first e-shops. So you can go to Facebook and buy this product through this e-shop through this. So that's that's uh, very exciting for us. But the click-through rate before this, from the people that viewed his Facebook site, was 58%. And he did run a targeted marketing campaign. He was looking at guys, uh, men between 18 and 28, high disposable incomes, no children, uh, fast cars, that sort of thing. 58% uh, conversion rate. It was so this was hard evidence that this edutizing approach that we developed, this tacky video, actually works. So he was absolutely made up with it, and you know it's a really, really positive outcome from this project, which uh, I hope you'd agree is, is staggering actually. Uh, if it's repeatable uh, with other companies, I think we, we we've generated something really quite special. Now, back to Stephanie. Okay. Um, this was the slightly more challenging element of the, um, of the project, the training providers. I don't know if you're all familiar with this style of uh, contractual arrangement. The training providers in an F of, through an FE college, um, they will provide training to people in, in the workplace, um, and they use the FE college in order to process any of the qualifications that are required for their clients. For that, we charge them anything from 10 to 30 percent of whatever their income is, which sounds like it works quite well. But the competitive nature of training providers um, within the uh, sector is phenomenal. Uh, so the aims were to uh, see whether or not the training providers used a CRM and uh, how many of them, um, how they used it. We wanted to determine good practice and obviously set up another community of practice amongst the training providers to encourage uh, sharing of good practice. Um, however, um, to uh, I gather that in sort of information, they were rather hostile to share how they use their CRM system. Um, and we found that rather difficult to, to explain to them, well, it is actually a project and we're only trying to gather information uh, in order for us to do some sort of theoretical output. But they actually saw this as a little bit of a, a business um, snooping, perhaps, um, and were very reluctant to share the information on their CRM and whether they'd got any revolutionary ideas on how to use it. And therefore, they were, again, very reluctant to share good practice.